Have you ever had this kind of an experience where you've had a few friends over to the house and you had the supply of uh, beer and wine and uh, your wife prepared a magnificent meal and a beautiful dessert and uh, you had good conversation after the meal was over and indeed everybody was very congenial as they were oiled a little by the old alcohol and generally uh, everybody made the right kinds of jokes and the right kinds of noises and uh, the conversation was uh, diplomatically brought around to whatever you happen to be good at. Maybe you're a good golfer or you're good at investing money or you're clever with your hands in the house and everybody made uh, suitable compliments to you on that and your wife even supported them and generally you came to the end of the evening with everybody having thought they had got their due amount of praise and attention and you particularly as you closed the front door and uh, walked back to the living room felt that that was a good evening and you said so to your wife that was a, a good evening dear really enjoyed that and uh, we must have them over again soon and then your wife goes up to bed and you just sit there looking at the last few coals in the fireplace or logs in the fireplace and uh, you sit there with maybe the remnants of uh, some Vichy water or some Perrier in your hand and uh, suddenly there comes into your mind a sense, is that all there is? Like that old song, you remember that uh, that was sung some years ago. Is that all there is? It was very nice, and I enjoyed it, and I certainly feel elated by all the nice things that were said about me, and I think the whole thing was very appropriate, and everybody dealt with each other very uh, rightly, and there, was n there were no difficult moments. Uh, but uh, is that all there is? I, I mean, after my friends have praised me, after my wife has respected me, uh, why do I feel this emptiness inside? And of course you look around the room and you see the empty glasses and you see the dying ashes in the grate and you think, well, maybe it's just the end of the evening and it's a foretaste of the morning after the night before and uh, I suppose really this is what uh, life is. It's, uh, as D.S. Eliot said, it ends not with a bang but a whimper. It it's kind of a, a down, and uh, there'll be another up uh, the next uh, evening we have together, or tomorrow is Saturday, and I'll go out and see the football game. So maybe it's not uh, anything more than just the uh, look of a room after a party. And yet deep down, there is something inside you that echoes the uh, scene of... Uh, uh, of uh, desecration or desolation around you in the room. There is something inside you that interprets that uh, as emptiness and as uh, somewhat meaninglessness because there's part of you that feels unsatisfied. And that's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about the fact that the problem with many of us modern men and women is not so much the problem of outer space or the exploration of outer space, but it is in fact the problem of inner space and the problem of the exploration of inner space. That there seems to be at the center of most of our beings a great part of us that is actually unsatisfied and continually remains unsatisfied despite all the things that we do with our hands and with our thoughts and with our minds and with our bodies and with our emotions. There seems to be part of us that is still pretty desolate and indeed we would say part of us that is utterly unsatisfied. Of course what we have been sharing now for eight or nine months is that the reason for this is we're firing on three cylinders. Uh, we're firing on three cylinders, or we should be firing on three cylinders, and we're only, in fact, firing on two cylinders. That we were made with three levels in our personality. We were made with a physical level, our bodies, through which we perceive the world of things and circumstances and people. 
We were given souls, which is the psychological part of us, our mind, emotions, and will, by which we're conscious of ourselves. But then also there's a third cylinder, which uh, for most of us is not firing at all, and that is the level of the spirit. And the spirit is not anything spooky. It's not even anything very religious. The spirit is the real you, the real person, the real person that you were made to be. And we've been discussing how the evidence of order and design in the universe obviously points to the existence of an intelligent being behind it all. And the evidence that we have studied in the, of the first century, in the first century of that unique man called Jesus of Nazareth, indicates that he is the son of the maker of the universe. And he has explained to us that the reason the creator made you was not just to have a party and not just to stimulate your little body so that your emotions would be satisfactorily balanced, but so that you could love him and know him and so that he could love you and be your friend and so that together you could develop the world, the infinite universe, after this life is over. And your spirit is the part of you that relates to your creator or your maker. And that's the part that has gone dead. And that's the part that gives you such messages of desolation and of lack of satisfaction at a moment such as we described after all the friends have left the house and you've had a beautiful evening together. That's the part of us that is pretty dead. And the reason it's dead is that we operate primarily from the body to the soul. That is, we don't operate from the spirit outwards. We don't any longer know who we are. We don't know who we are or what we're meant to be. We don't know why we were put here on earth. We don't know what the Creator had in mind for us. And so we have not consulted our spirits. We have not looked into ourselves. We couldn't find ourselves if you paid us money. Many of us, if, if we were asked, now what would you really like to do? We think and we think and we think and we say, oh, well, I'd like to drink Coke and eat ice cream all day or drink whiskey all day. And then we realize, no, we couldn't do that, that we wouldn't last too long. And then we say, well, we'd like to sail all day. We'd like to play tennis all day. And then we realize, no, we'd get bored with that. And finally, we say, oh, well, I'd like to do what I'm doing. And what I'm doing has so often come about through sheer necessity. It isn't a job that I really feel I was fitted to do. It's a job that brought good money and brought security and brought the wherewithal to have a family and to have some kind of happiness in life. But it isn't necessarily what I think I was made for. And indeed, we now are at the point where we don't know what we were made for and we can't find ourselves because our spirits have gone dead. And it's so long since we ever attempted to think seriously about the possibility of a creator or the possibility that we have anything to do with the overall purpose of the universe. And of course the question that comes to all of us is, well, if I find myself like that, and certainly I can echo some of the thoughts that you've expressed today, uh, how do I find myself? How do I discover who I am? Well, the only way you can is if something comes alive inside you again. That's the problem. The problem is that you're very alive in your body and you're very alive in your soul. That is, you're very alive in your mind and emotions and you're very alive in your body, but your spirit is virtually dead. At times, you remember we said, the conscience which is part of the spirit. At times you're aware of your conscience, but actually your conscience just urges you to live up to the best that you know. And the best that you know is what the creator of the world has told you in your spirit through intuition. And usually we have so perverted our consciences that it no longer does that. It simply tries to get us to live up to the best that we know in our mind, which is usually a set of laws or rules or regulations or a set of religious do's and don'ts that we have to follow. And so our conscience usually operates, but it operates in a perverted way. Our conscience is really meant to urge us to live up to what our Creator is saying to us through our spirits. But of course, when our spirit is dead, our intuition is non-existent, is inoperative, and we no longer know what He wants us to do. And so all we can do is follow what everybody else thinks. How do we 
ever come to the point where we begin to find ourselves again. Well, what we shared, of course, yesterday was that the Creator wants you to find yourself. He wants you to be the person he made you to be. He wants you to discover what he put you on the earth to do. He has a vested interest in that. He wants you to do what he made you to do. So he will tell you. You ask him. That's what he said. If you seek me with all your heart, you'll find me. If you ask me for my spirit, I'll give you my spirit and make yours alive so that you can begin to become aware of me. Ask him. You can ask him. That's all you have to do. That's the start. Begin. Just ask him today. And he will send the spirit of his son into your heart.